7.04, I will call this meeting to order. We'll just start with a roll call vote. Start recording. I believe it is. It's been recording this whole time. Has it? See in the top left, see in the top left it says recording. Or it says recording on my end. All right. Um, so I'm just going to go through the list I have. And if I don't say your name, then uh, please let me know. Dave Robbins, Colleen Roy present, Julie Grace, Anne-Marie Foley, Susan Duvall. Present. Sue Robbins. Present. Chantel Kimball. Here. Essek Petrie. Here. JT Ross. Rashawn Utangi. Deborah George. Justin Hollander. Linda Hassinger. Here. John Allen. Here. Lindsey Fox. Present. Julie Capizio. Victoria Duckworth. Present. Dorian DeFazio. Bob Carroll. Yeah, Bob's here. And Brian Houle. Present. All right. And then we have our um, guests from CNMRPC, uh, Elena and Sarah. Did I miss anybody? Yes, me. Deborah George, apologize. Present. Thank you. Okay. All right, so that's done. First thing on the agenda is to approve the minutes from April 1st, 2024. Did everybody get a chance to read those? Yep. If so, I can take a motion. I move that we approve the minutes of April 1st as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? I'm going to do that by roll call. Colleen, aye. Susan Duvall? Aye. Sue Robbins? Aye. Chantel? Chantel Kimball. I don't Sorry, think I didn't realize I had remuted. I. <laughs> uh, Essek Petrie. Aye. Deborah George. Aye. Linda Hassinger. Aye. John Allen. Aye. Lindsay Fox. Aye. Victoria Duckworth. Abstain. Okay. Bob Carroll. Carroll's aye. And Brian Wolf. Abstain. Okay. We'll do that. And... All right, motion passes. And then, so we can approve the finding goals and objective for land use, government services, and transportation chapters if um, Sarah or Elena wants to review that first. Do you guys have the ability to share a screen and everything you need to do? Yes, I think we have everything. Sarah will share her screen. Um, and I wanted to start with land use. Sarah, if you could scroll to land use. Um, we've made some revisions. Fiona had some suggestions and we added a few more things based on the local recovery plan from 2021. So we thought there's some pertinent points there that need to be included. So slight revisions, but we wanted to show you this latest version. It was also included in the version we circulated with the goals. Um, you can, we won't go through the goals again, but um, wanted to call to your attention. Uh, Sarah, if you could scroll to the bottom of I apologize. I'm trying to find the line here. Um, it is goal three, second action item. That's a new action item. It says update the industrial district zoning to accommodate a mix of uses and encourage investments and economic activity in underutilized areas. So this is a recommendation that came from the local recovery plan. Uh, there are um, from the, that workshop, it appears there are a lot of par parcels with street frontage that are underutilized and they could be util utilized for commercial, but they're not zoned for commercial. Um, mixed use was also one of the proposals and we've tried to be attentive to not having competing land uses uh, create an imbalance <clears throat> between industrial, commercial and housing. Um, but when it comes to parcels that are being underutilized, 
uh, we thought this would be a good thing to put in their recommendations so that the planning board, when a zoning review happens in the future, can address this to see if this is a viable option. So again, we're referring to the industrial district, North Grafton. Um, and I know John will uh, protest that we are opening up industrial land use for other uses, but um, again, this is to activate that area that might have potential for commercial in particular. So that is, I think, the most important change in land use. Fiona had some suggestions as, as well. Again, we're looking to the future to that zoning review that will update um, the bylaws that have been consistently updated through amendments, but um, the zoning review will be comprehensive. So that, that's what the revisions try to keep in mind. So that's the one we wanted uh, your approval on today. The transportation uh, didn't change substantially. Um, if I could interrupt briefly, um, Colleen, we just received an email from Roshan that he doesn't have his panelist link. I'm not sure if that's something you could resend or if I could send my link, but I don't think that's the panelist link. If he looks at the agenda posted online, he can join and I can I can make him a panelist. Okay. Perfect. I'll send him a link. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions um, based off what they just heard? And I have to scroll through to see everybody real quick. I don't see any hands. Do you need a so, motion to approve? Did you want to vote on that action item? Yes, I, I think um, since we've we've done revisions throughout, again no new action items beyond that one. I think we uh, we could just adopt land use um, and do the same for town services and transportation. Do you wanna vote them separately or should we just go over them all and then do one motion for all of them tonight? I think in the interest of time, uh, one motion for all of them, especially since the only changes are in land use would be appropriate, but I, I'm sorry, maybe that question was not directed to me. Um, but oh, that that's fine. If if does anybody have any questions at all before we make a motion? Okay, I don't see any hands, so I can take a motion to approve the land use, government services, and transportation chapters as presented. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. We're gonna do it by roll call. Colleen I, Susan Duvall. I Sue Robbins. I Chantel Kimball. Aye. Essek Petrie. Aye. Deborah George. Aye. Linda Hassinger. Aye. John Aye. Allen. Aye. Lindsay Fox. Aye. Victoria Duckworth. Aye. Bob Carroll. Carroll's aye. Brian Hull. Aye. All right, motion passes. And then next up is for discussion items, goals and objectives, developments for the open space and recreation, as well as natural and cultural resources chapters. So we'll start with open space and recreation um, and Sarah will address natural and uh, cultural resources. The two are similar in outlook. They're both concerned with preservation of natural and cultural assets, um, but open space uh, has also a recreation component, which we're addressing today. Um, there is, uh, you, we'll try to establish a link between open space and economic development in that we will develop a subsection of the economic development chapter that deals with ecotourism. So that will be addressed more in depth in economic development in this, chapter, we're dealing mostly with preservation of natural assets and open space, um, dealing with, um, you know, cleaning up waterways from invasives, for example, and economic development will deal with, if you bring people to town uh, for these recreational amenities, where will they spend the money? So that's, that's the other side of uh, ecotourism 
it's it's not a huge part of Grafton's economy, but uh, we think it should be a subset of it, especially since it might help maintain um, and preserve some of these open space assets. So I just wanted to make that note that we'll address more thoroughly how to do this in economic development. This is mostly uh, dealing with the preservation of these assets and economic development will deal with partnerships more thoroughly and with um, engaging with mountain biking clubs and um, all of these athletic clubs and local clubs that actually do bring people um, to trails, to mountain biking trails, um, ATV trails and so on. So I will start with uh, goal one. Um, I wanted to say that this is based on both the survey and the responses to um, resp responses to the survey and the workshop. And um, a lot of them are based on your suggestions. So goal one is enhance Grafton's existing recreational resources and plan new amenities. The first objective is increase resources to maintain active and passive recreation and facilities. And the first action item is develop and regularly update a capital improvement plan for recreation facilities. So we're starting, starting off with dealing with the town's capacity to maintain um, these assets and recreational facilities, um, fiscal and staffing. The next action item um, is partner with existing organizations such as Mass Audubon and trustees. Next is, is increase group usage of existing resources such as trails, bird watching, community gardens, and pickleball tournaments. Can I pause you right there? We do have a hand from Brian Hull. Yes, uh, I, I didn't see anything in here about equine. And I know that we have a lot of that going on in town. Um, uh, horses using the trails and so forth. Uh, there's, I think there's a club even. But um, I don't know if you want to mention that or not. Uh, we could certainly mention is the the club name Equine. Did I understand that correctly? No, Equine. Not the, if I'm saying it correctly, um, the uh, the horse, you know, back riding type of things. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, of horse. course. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's a lot of that going on in town. Right. Do we have a club though, Brian? I. I don't know. I I I know that there's um, over near the flea market. There's a there's a stable over there, and uh, that's that's being used an awful lot. And there's that's also a, a couple of other locations. I think maybe I'm not sorry, the Hill Road with that equine. I'm sorry. I know George Hill Road. We have horses. And right. Right. Everything. So. Yeah. Camels. Yeah. That, that's certainly something we should mention, especially if there are a lot of events related to it. I think that would be important. So thanks for noting that. Sure. Uh, I think most of the equine type activities are on private land as opposed to public land. Uh, they actually, John, they actually use uh, public land. And oh, it's over in the Silver Lake uh, area. And also, um, uh, where else? Um, at least that area, anyway, that I'm, I'm definitely familiar with. And they're using the trails. Yeah. They do use um, the, the trails that are above George Hill Road that are between, uh, that, that really cross over between Grafton and Upton. There's a lot of horse activity in that area, I know. Um, you have to be very careful going over Fay Mountain. Fay Mountain. Yep. Yeah. Um, that there are many homes along there that have horses. So actually there is a lot of activity and we see them up all through the area above us uh, on George Hill Road, actually, that side. Um, and so it, it's got to be everywhere. I think that Gibson no longer keeps horses, but of course they, they too are a place that had horses for quite a while. Um, but there are horses in the area. Right, so moving on. So you'll include that and... Uh... Yeah, we'll include that. It may not be in, in this action item. There's a uh, the 
another action and objective that deals with expanding usage of trails, this may fit better under that, but I do think it belongs here just as mountain biking does, for example. Uh, again, this, this type of activity and working with these clubs, I think it's essential to bringing people into town and you know, expanding the ecotourism side. So if they are, if there are no more questions, I can move on to the next objective. I think Petrie just raised his hand. Oh. Yeah, thanks, sorry. I just wanted to know, and I don't know that these are necessarily put in any specific order, but the last action item on that page really, I think would help um, with this you know, issue as far as inventorying what we currently have as a town and, and what's existing. You know, if we have a solid inventory, um, that would really help us uh, better understand kind of how to promote it, how to use it, and what's missing. I know the, the town website has a lot of resources like that too. So just helping people be aware of what resources exist, I think would be helpful. Right. Okay. And yeah, I, I absolutely. And I just, I want to make sure that, you know, we, and I know that it's captured in there. I just wasn't sure if there was a, particular order or um, or not for those, but uh, I think that's just a critical early step in, um, you know, advancing what we, you know, what we can do from an open space and recreation perspective. Right. Cool. All right. Um, all right, Asik, I'm just going to ask you to put your hand down so I don't keep calling on you. And Elena, if you Sorry about that. <laughs> And Bob, thank you for uh, sharing that link with the trails. Okay, so the next ob objective, ensure open space and recreation amenities are accessible for people of all capabilities and ages, which includes improved signage and other wayfinding, um, identifying the location, access points for oral conservation lands that are open to the public. Um, prepare paper and digital resources. So this this is part of what ESSEC mentioned. Um, it's about inventorying, but also marketing these resources. To prepare paper and digital resources, including social media, detailing the town's recreation facilities, public open spaces, trail systems, and other resources to publicize Grafton special places and to new residents and visitors. Um, so this is obviously the marketing side of um, of open space and recreation. Social media is actually instrumental and has been for um, a lot of these efforts in other towns. So we have a lot of best practices on how to do this. It's uh, primarily a, a question of town capacity. The next action item, increase available parking spaces and improve condition of condition of parking at conservation properties. Um, so um, again, this, this is a pervasive issue with open space. Uh, some sites have more parking than others, but it's, it's good to keep this as a goal uh, that wherever possible, this should be improved. The next objective, is expand facilities and recreation into areas lacking amenities. Uh, this is a recommendation that came from um, the OSRP plan. Goal two, provide passive recreation opportunities at our water features for residents to enjoy. Um, this suggestion came from Lindsay. And we've uh, we've had conversations with Parks and Recreation um, that suggested that a lot of the waterways are, are some of the most popular venues for Grafton residents. Um, not all of them are accessible. Uh, some of them suffer from um, invasives, so there would be a, a cleanup operation needed. Um, but this again, this is an important uh, feature that came up in in the workshop and the survey. The first objective is identify, preserve, and protect 
land surrounding the town's water features from further development to promote use for open space and recreation while protecting our natural resources. And the action items are improved signage for main roads to make residents aware of water features, boat launches nearby, improved parking at Silver Lake, um, discuss opportunities to improve water feature, water features, prevent loss of water features, um, weed removal. So um, water chestnut was a big issue that uh, Parks and Rec director highlighted to us. It requires a, a substantial cleanup effort. Uh, prevent further erosion around water features uh, with groups like Winsigamon and Blackstone River Watershed Association. So these are some of the partnerships that might help with that effort. And if there are no other questions, we can move on to the next objective. I just have just a comment. It's Sue here. Um, should we include Lake Ripple in there? There was a long time ago that we cleaned up Lake Ripple, but it hasn't been done in a long, long time. So we might want to mention Lake Ripple in there. Right. Or weed removal. Yeah, we can we can give it as an example. Brian, you have your hand up as well. Yes, I just want a question regarding uh, the objective. Uh, the last part says, while protecting our natural resources, I know it's, we're talking about features from further development. Are we talking about any other things uh, in terms of protecting our natural environment uh, in this particular objective? Uh, for instance, um, the town salts the roads, but they ignore the fact that streams run under the roads all throughout town. Uh, you know, is that something that we put in here? Um, you know, is, is that too micro for this? Uh, it's just just uh, an idea that I had. That's all. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Um, I, I think this goal was mostly directed toward uh, development encroaching into, um, especially around waterways. Um, if you could give us some examples of what you're referring to, we, we would like to be, to understand the issue a little bit better. So you mentioned waterways running under the roads. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of uh, streams and uh, brooks uh, running for instance, uh, I, I live next to one here in uh, off of Carroll Road. Uh, there's a there's a stream that runs um, at the bottom of our you know, baseline elevation here. And that stream runs right into uh, Lake Ripple, um, but um, and it actually runs on both sides off of North Street as well. And, uh, and during the winter, we salt the roads, but there's no um, I guess signs or anything for the uh, salters to notice that they would stop salting, you know, because salt does create a problem for the environment, you know, especially in waterways. So um, it, it's happening here. I'm sure it's happening in other places. And we have a lot of streams throughout Grafton, you know, so. We talk a lot about stormwater mitigation under the transportation chapter. Right. Uh, so we could add something a little bit more about salting. We have um, deploying nature-based solutions to reduce stormwater um, and sweet streeping, kind of sweet street sweeping, kind of getting at the same idea. But that would be a great place to add something about salting too. Uh, some of our communities are thinking about alternatives to salt as well that could be explored. Yeah, this this could also be a town services issue. I know the the DPWs in general have um different approaches to salting with salt pollution in mind depending on the amount of snow so they use different types of salts to minimize pollution um we haven't approached that topic with dpw um sarah correct me if i'm wrong here um but we may make a note of it yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's not an easy thing to do we have an awful lot of streams running through grafton but again, it's it's an area that um, you know needs to I think be paid attention to um, and see if something can be done to help anyway. Yeah. 
I would certainly like to look at alternatives to salting. Since... Can I? Sorry. No, no, you're fine. If, if but it, as far as the salting goes, looking at alternatives and and having that for the discussion is good. Can I just bring us back to the action items that we were on though? Um, does anybody want to add? Because I I wanted to add one one more thing to discuss opportunity and identify funding sources to improve water features, prevent loss, because I do know in the past CPC has helped pay for lake weed removal, as well as help buy parcels of land to help for, you know, protect some of those water um, areas. So beyond just discussing opportunities, but identifying funding sources is probably important to, to help, you know, find grants and things like that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks for that comment. Uh, again, this is about building town capacity to handle these issues. Grants is definitely a, a huge part of it. Any other questions before I move on to uh, the next objective? We have a couple more comments in the chat and you guys are seeing all that where, yep. okay, perfect. Yep. Just wanted everyone to know that. Okay, next objective, expand the town-wide system of trails to provide hiking, jogging, and biking options and increase the usage of trail network. The first Would action be a good place to add uh, horse riding. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking that this would be. Um, especially since we talk about promoting partnerships. Uh, this is where um, I think a conversation or outreach effort between the town and all these clubs that are generally looking for sites to have events. Um, either you know a 5k or a mountain bike race um, or maybe a horseback riding event uh, that this is I think where we're trying to capture that so the first action item would be support the trails committee in addressing issues regarding the town's trails Promote partnerships with local and regional clubs. Um, as I mentioned, this this is uh, you know one strategy of ecotourism to attracting events in town. Um, this is also related to town services. There's permitting issues involved with um, bringing visitors to to these events. So anything a trails committee could do to um, liaise with these clubs and also facilitate permitting, I think uh, it would, you know, pave the way for increasing usage. The next action item is develop a plan to ensure coordination between land trust, local clubs, and other agencies, organizations to make data on trails publicly available on the same platforms and in the same formats. Um, so this would obviously not only, it, centralize things, um, the, the database or the inventory, if you wish, if you will, but also um, use social media and other avenues to uh, distribute these to the public. Next action item, ensure all coordinated trails data is made available to emergency service personnel. And then um, develop a local and regional bike plan um, mountain biking clubs I, are quite active in the region, so this is this is why we keep mentioning them. Um, they tend to organize events. They're they're quite well organized. They um, are mostly active in Western Mass, but Central Mass is actually uh, an opportunity to capture some of this audience, and Grafton could certainly do it. Can I um, suggest adding on that first action item, support the um, trails committee, but also include the conservation committee? Because I know that's something that they 
work diligently on and they have a, a lot of um, input on this as well. So I, I don't wanna make it seem like none of this is happening already. And I don't wanna exclude people who've been working diligently on this as well. That makes sense. Thanks for the suggestion. And uh, Carolyn, thanks for the suggestion for Bay State Trail Riders. Um, this would be something very interesting to look into. I know ATV riders were making a similar pitch in the region that they would collaborate with the town to maintain trails. Uh, snowmobiling, they're, they're very well organized and they already do this, but thanks for that suggestion. So this could be, you know, part of a town outreach to to these clubs and working with them. And it, again, since we're talking about building town capacity for maintaining these assets, um, capitalizing on on all this volunteer um, efforts that that could, you know, be put toward maintaining trails is would be something positive. Okay, moving on. Um, sorry, I missed one action item. It was hide, hiding. The one, uh, the last one is work with CMRPC in collaboration with neighboring communities for bike, bike path connections. So our transportation department in particular is um, working on this. Any other comments on this before we move on to the next objective? And Carolyn, we got your comment about ATV. We've had conversations with the, um, I don't wanna call them clubs because they're less organized than let's say the snowmobile clubs, but uh, there, there's definitely, um, you know, I don't wanna call it a market, but ATV riders are, definitely expressing a wish to to work with the towns. Bob has his hand up as well. Yeah, unfortunately, um, there's prohibition on uh, land trust land with no motor vehicles allowed. So that would have to be changed on all the land trust. That's right. And, it you know, it's problematic. There's some erosion. It's not as simple as, you know, there's all this energy that towns are not capturing. Um, ATVs may or may not be appropriate everywhere, but from uh, the conversations we've had, um, there's, you know, volunteers do want to work on this, much like the snowmobile community, and sure. have a less, uh, you know, contentious relationship with towns as far as access to trails. So, um, again, we're including it here as something to work toward. Uh, we you know, location is is very specific and the trails committee would be able to establish that or the CONCOM. Um, but it's, we're going to be a little bit more specific to include that. All right, moving on. Um, the next objective, I'm sorry, goal four protect open space and natural resources from ecological harm and overdevelopment. The objective is protect surface and groundwater resources, wetlands, vernal pools, unique habitats and wildlife corridors. Um, this is uh, a suggestion from uh, the open space plan. The action item is improved parking and amenities at Silver Lake. And the next action item is solve the water chestnut infestation at Fisherville's Pond. And I think here we could have a few more example, uh, not just Fisherville Pond. Uh, you, you just mentioned uh, Lake Ripple. Bob, I see you have your hand up still. Did you wanna add something or do you have a question? Uh, no, I think that's left over. Okay. Chantel also has her hand up. Yeah, I, I just wasn't sure how parking, improving parking and amenities doesn't really seem to jive with this objective um, where we're talking more here about 
um, preserving wildlife, whereas improving parking and amenities seems to be more um, access and perhaps belongs with those recreational goals as opposed to protecting. Yeah, thanks for flagging that. We need to move that up to um, improving access. Nice catch. Chantel, can you put your hand down though? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So any comments in general about open space? So we've uh, we've gone through all the goals and action items. We'll make these edits. Um, Looks like Deborah has her hand up. Yeah, I just want to comment that goal for protect open space and natural resources from ecological harm and overdevelopment. Oh, this uh, talk about monetizing all of Grafton's natural resources is in opposition to that. There's a reason land trust doesn't allow motorized vehicles on their land. If you allow ATVs and uh, mountain biking on your trails, you push horse riding off the trails, you push uh, hiking off the trails. Uh, so th th these things just aren't complete partnerships, if you will. Yeah, the, there's certainly some competing uses here. And uh, again, this these uh, goals and action items are trying to highlight all of these options, but the decision-making and the regulatory actions would obviously be with the committees involved and the CONCOM. Um, but sometimes they do go hand in hand, especially when it comes to the maintenance of recreational facilities. Uh, but when it comes to preservation, absolutely, this needs to be a very customized approach, especially with ATVs. The, we know there's erosion involved. Uh, do you feel that we need to adjust the language here to capture that? Um, it just it just feels like it's been very heavy on monetizing the natural resources as much as possible. Uh, and for instance, you talk about water chestnut infestation several times, but the reason there's water chestnut infestations is be from people dropping boats into the water. So, so perhaps maybe there needs to be some understanding that this divisions between some some natural resources just need to be left as natural resources and not jumped all over to see how much money can be made from them. I think she made an excellent point. Yeah, it, you know, we can adjust this goal to talk about designating certain areas for preservation. Uh, so we can bring in some of the activity that the land trust is doing to highlight the fact that we don't, maybe we don't want public access everywhere. Deb, if your question has been answered, um, if you don't mind putting your hand down and Chantel, I saw your hand go up and then down. So I don't know if you have a comment. No, I was just going to suggest um, changing language to identify appropriate opportunities, maybe, um, for some of these activities, but then Elena said it, so. Any other questions or comments before we move on to natural and cultural resources? Okay, so we'll, we'll make these edits um, and maybe we can adopt these next time with some of these edits, especially this preservation, emphasize a little bit more the, the preservation aspect in goal four. Sue, I see your hand up. I just had a quick question for you, Elena. You were talking about snowmobiles on trails and what are, the, are, what are those little, what did you mention else, are something or another. What do they do now about the noise pollution? because snowmobiles are pretty noisy and so are those bikes. How did the towns handle that? 
you know, I, I know, all I know is they have, um, the snowbirds have very good relationships with the towns when it comes to the trails they use and they have established paths that tie into a larger network. I'm not sure if all of them are where they should be to not disturb wildlife, um, well, but maybe that's something to look into. Yeah, I just I was just curious because there's some trails that are in back of residential areas and I'm not so sure if homeowners would like that. So yeah, just that curious. Would be the case, yeah. <clears throat> And I think, you know, the snowbirds have been around for a while. They have some established best practices. So um, when it comes to property owners, that that's very location specific. And um, we'll have to look at where their paths are located in Grafton to see if there's any conflict or if they're close to a residential area. Agree. <clears throat> Any other comments? I think we can move on to natural cultural resources and I'll turn it over to my colleague, Sarah. Great. I think this conversation is the perfect transition to this chapter, which is a chapter much less focused on people and more on Grafton's environment, history, uh, and what we want to preserve. Uh, so I'll go through and please feel free to cut me off. Goal one is identify, preserve, and protect the town's natural resources from ecological harm and further development. Uh, so our objective here is to identify and target new priority land acquisitions that will connect to existing town recreation and conservation resources. Action items under that are to develop a priority list of parcels for immediate and future acquisition of land to expand and connect existing resources based on risk, proximity to existing resources, and other factors. Expand facilities and opportunities to underserved areas to ensure equitable access for all residents and work with the Planning Board, Select Board, Zoning Board of Appeals and Conservation Commission to develop an approach to requiring investment in open space and recreation as part of special permits and orders of condition. Can I? Go ahead, Brian. You're on mute, bud. It doesn't look like we're including the land trust in any of this uh, that you're talking about here. Um, they've done a lot of planning with regards to available land and, and uh, you know, it might be worthwhile to include them somehow in this when you're identifying, preserving, protecting these natural resources and so forth. That's really the, the goal of the land trust. And, you know, they're kind of an extension of the, the town in some respects. Um, and they probably have a, a very good handle on all of this and mm -hmm. presently share that information with the town anyway. I just don't see it in this um, draft that you've got here. So we can definitely add it to this last action item here. Uh, anywhere else that would be appropriate, perhaps in this priority list action item? I wanted to uh, add to that action item as well to develop and maintain a priority list because I know last week an open space partial prioritization project was published where it has that list already done. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this action item is pretty much completed already, but we got to maintain it as well. So I think that's really important. Thank you. Yeah. Next objective. Okay. Next objective is to protect surface and groundwater resources, wetlands, vernal pools, unique habitats, and wildlife corridors. Uh, two action items under that as examples are to collaborate with the Conservation Commission, Grafton Land Trust, and groups like the Trails Committee and neighboring watershed associations to identify areas of concern and opportunities to protect and preserve 
the town's natural resources from further harm and development. Chantel. Yes, this feels like it duplicates one that we just read in the other section. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if it needs to be in both places or if it should just be one or the other. It reads almost identically to one above and I can't scroll because <laughs> of yeah. your screen sharing, but um, the one that we moved the parking out from mm -hmm. um, reads very similarly to this. So I just wonder if they should all be in the same place with the water chestnuts and all of the. Yeah. I think if it's going to be in one chapter, it might fit best in this one. Um, I think sometimes we like to put similar language in for different audiences of who's going to be um, listening to the open space and recreation chapter versus who is the audience for the natural cultural resources chapter, making sure that this, especially this one, is a top priority. But if it seems too redundant, uh, I think it would make sense to move whatever is under it in the open space to this chapter. Do you agree, Elena? Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. We we sometimes address the same topic in two chapters from different angles, but um, we can adjust this to not repeat the same thing. The spirit here is um, protect water resources, but in one chapter, we can treat it as preservation. The other one, we can treat it as um, a, a natural resources, resource that attracts visitors. So that's that's basically the two main different angles we have on water resources. Chantel, do you still have a question or is that a leftover hand? Okay. So are we keeping this action item down here as well or are we not? Because I do have a question if we're keeping it. Uh, this first action item? No, the action item collaborate with Conservation Commission, Graft and Land Trust and groups like the Trails Committee. Um, mm -hmm. The question I have is the, the Trails Committee is, is still um, pretty new and I don't believe protecting groundwater resources is really within their scope. So identifying them here um, specifically doesn't seem necessarily appropriate for, for that committee at this time. Okay, sure. So they deal specifically with trails, um, not water resources or protection. Well, I guess I have to make a comment because the Trails Committee, they have to watch out for wetlands mm -hmm. when they're developing trails. So I think it's appropriate to leave them in there. I'm not I'm not going to disagree. I just thought the whole scope of the Trails Committee was just to make sure. Um, I don't even know exactly what their, their scope was. I think that they're, they're still... Uh, Bye, Bob. Thank you. Identifying that they were just supposed to be communicating between existing groups because a lot of existing groups were doing the work. So I guess to that point, Sue, then yes, that they're communicating with people. I'm trying to pull up the website, but the website's a little funny right now. Yeah. Carolyn says we are still figuring it out. Right. <laughs> I just didn't want to put too much on their shoulders and, you know, overwhelm them. <laughs> it feels to me like they're just being mentioned here as a resource to understand where trails are, are or are potentially could be located in reference to where there's also potentially watersheds or, or resources not necessarily expecting that they will be responsible for preservation or identification right and the conservation commission absolutely does that they that's part of their you know job so so perhaps we could take it out and leave uh this more open-ended language groups like uh to add if the trails committee is appropriate for this they surely should be in the conversation mm -hmm. but we don't need to list them by name So our second action item under this objective is to ensure there is a water quality plan in place for all of town surface waters that is actively maintained and implemented. 
And then our next objective, our last one under goal one, is to secure additional protection for groundwater resources, including prioritizing land acquisitions to protect drinking water supply and surface water resources, and reviewing and updating the water supply protection overlay district at regular intervals. Any questions on goal one? Go, 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 yes, Chantal. Sorry, um, looking at that, should there be some mention of partnering with the water district because they're not specifically under the town's umbrella? Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of run independently. So uh, some of those items may be more within their purview than the town of Grafton's purview. And to that point, both water districts, because we have two. Right. Yes, have, that um, is true. Yeah, I put that in the objective so it can include both item action items there. That seems important. Yeah. Thank you. And just adding to Chantel on the one above there, the action item on um, water quality plan that mm -hmm. I know that the DPW, they have to have a stormwater management plan in place that also talks about water quality of any stormwater that ends up in the surface water. So right. maybe collaborating with the DPW on that. Yeah. Thank you, by the way, for these suggestions. So when we develop the implementation plan and matrix, so that will be a section as part of the chapter, uh, we are certainly going to ask for suggestions uh, about who the responsible parties should be, uh, both town departments, committees, boards, uh, maybe even regional partners. Uh, so we... Um, we we certainly will be looking for your feedback for those as well but we're these are very much welcome in the action items as well because we're we're trying to be very specific here mm -hmm. well especially because like the water department it's not just it's not a department within the town of Grafton it is a completely separate entity that we don't have any direct control over it has a separate meeting and a separate so separate board yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they would certainly be partners. Um, maybe not responsible parties, but partners. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they know, but they're privately owned. Yeah. Cool. Moving on to goal two. Preserve Grafton's character by retaining what is left of Grafton's agricultural roots. First objective is to promote and support local agriculture. Our action items under here as examples are to provide outreach opportunities for agricultural landowners to express their concerns, consider ways to support agricultural landowners through agritourism, farmers markets, and agriculture-based businesses. If Chapter 61A land becomes available, consider retaining and using for activities such as community gardens, and consider implementing right to farm. Our second objective is to preserve Grafton's farms. Uh, to work with Grafton's working farmers and agricultural landowners to encourage continued preservation of town's remaining agricultural resources. And that is all for goal two, based on agriculture. Any questions there or comments? Yes, yeah, so your hand is left over, just so you know. Well, I was just about to put it up again, so. Okay. But I think we called on Sue first, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to comment that it was nice to see the right to farm back on because several years ago, and it's been a long time, but a bylaw came to the town meeting for right to farm. And because it wasn't written properly, it was turned down. So it's good to see this back. I'm happy to see that. Thank you. Chantal. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it was my turn. Um, I was just wondering if these two objectives could be consolidated, um, especially since there's only one action item under Preserve Grafton's Farms. It feels like preserving Grafton's Farms is part of promoting and supporting local agriculture. Sure, so we could do one of these and farms. Is that more crisp?
so I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Who who are we assigning these action items to? Who's providing outreach? Who's gonna work with Grafton's farmers? Who who do we want to see do that? Mm -hmm. I was under the impression that after we said all these action items, we're going to go back and assign okay. people to them. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and for anything agriculture, I mean, we, agricultural commission would be the natural choice, uh, but there could be other boards involved as well. Uh, and again, you know, we would want to hear from the farming community on this too. So usually in the in the implementation matrix or chapter we assign responsible parties but we also assign partners and okay. partners won't be part of the town necessarily but outside entities and private entities but not not to pick on trails committee but we've mentioned them multiple times as well as Grafton land trust and then not to mention other people that would be involved in these kind of just stood out to me Do you feel that they we've overcommitted them across these action items? No, not not at all. But that that we're not consistent, so we're not including like the agricultural commission is as mentioned to be in here. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, that makes sense. Ag ag committee here, like Carolyn is saying there. Mm -hmm. You can add that. Perfect. Anything else for goal two? Okay. I believe our last goal here, goal three, is to preserve Grafton's historic character and cultural resources. First objective is to build financial capacity to ensure historic resources are supported by Grafton's local government. Two action item examples are to support partnerships and resources for cultural organizations, such as the Willard Clock Museum, the Library, the Lions Club, and the Grafton Historical Society, and maintain Massachusetts Historical Commission designation as a certified local government. Another objective would be to encourage preservation of privately owned historic assets. And the third objective would be to increase the public's access to historic resources information. And an example of an action item is to review and update Grafton's historical data in the Massachusetts Historical Commission database. Oh, and there's more. To develop wayfinding elements to promote awareness of and access to Grafton's historic and cultural resources and to hold community events at the Grafton Community Barn. Any questions on the last goal or natural cultural resources in general? Any hands? Excellent. All right. So now that we've gone through goals and objectives, uh, next steps would be for us to approve those goals and objectives we did, but that'll be at our next meeting after you guys go back with the um, input you received tonight. Does anybody else have any more comments or discussions from what we did tonight? Because if not, we can move right on to public input. And seeing none. I have a, I have there a question for Elena. Um, how do towns, who looks into, we have a, a gun club and I sometimes wonder if that's ever checked for I'm sure there's lead but I just wonder how they're supervised or does anybody supervise a gun club with the lead it typically is the board of health though they deal mostly with buildings um building inspector if there are buildings involved and of course the conservation committee if you know, if they're close to, let's say, a uh, wetland. Um, these, you know, they're, as in wetland. Thing, they are located in wetland and it, it streams down into Lake Ripple. I mean, uh, Silver Lake. Yeah. 
So I just wonder who governs that. I had no idea. Yeah. It, you know, unfortunately, when it comes to inspection services, it's mostly neighbors alerts that bring brings an inspector to a site. Okay. Um, so, you know, there's not, I don't want to use the word policing, but um, there are limited town resources to enforce these things. And they're usually triggered by a neighbor complaint or someone who notices something. With lead, you would have to actively test it and then notify um, the town, essentially. Well, the Rifle Gun Club has been there for a long, long time, so... All right, that was a... I said they don't have lead anymore, but they've been there for ages, so. Right, right. So the concern is contamination of waterways? Yes. Is that right? All right, any other questions or comments? And if not, I could take a motion to adjourn. Susan. Sorry, I just was thinking with the cultural and historic resources. Where where do we talk about like our veteran um, and our war memorials and stuff like that? Is that a cultural resource that should be pointed out or maintained? Um, just thought of it. It certainly is. Uh, if you think there are landmarks that um, the Historical Commission should pursue designations for, we could include that um, in the chapter itself. So we can address it in general in the goals and strategies, but then in the chapter, we could actually name a few um, of these. So if, if you have a list of things that could be candidates for this, we could make suggestions for that in the chapter. Yeah, I was just thinking we were doing an inventory that those would, the you know, the different war memorials that we have in town would be in that list, but. Yeah, do you know if some of them have a designation or um, a preservation restriction? I do not, they're, I mean, they're just statues or, you know, around the town common different that the kids go to, I know when they do their tour of downtown. Um, but I just thought they should be included on a list if we end up putting one together. Yeah. Chantel? Um, likewise, it feels like this section might be the right place to call out a partnership with the Hasamanesco tribe um, for sites that are important to them um, and that cultural heritage as well. Yeah, thank you for that suggestion. Yes. Good point. Susan, did your hand go back up or is that left over? Everybody shifted, so I'm not sure. Okay. All right, those are some um, really good comments at the end. Does anybody else have any other comments or questions before we adjourn? All right, if not, I can take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Motion made and second. We're going to do it by roll call. Colleen, aye. Susan, aye. Sue Robbins, aye. Chantel Kimball, aye. Essek Petrie, aye. Roshan Mtangi, aye. Deborah George, aye. Linda Hassinger, aye. John Allen, aye. Lindsay Fox, aye. And then Victoria Duckworth, aye. Bob Carroll, I think, had to leave. And then Brian Wolf. Bye. All right, we're adjourned.